Next question is from Beck Pastor. What value does a cool down provide after a workout? What is the best way to cool down? Okay, so cooling down, um, if you had to compare it to priming, uh, I don't think it's uh, as important, but it does have uh, some value. From a muscle building perspective, static stretching, first off, this is when you do it. You would do the static stretching at the end of the workout. Um, so if you just worked out your back or your chest, now you're going to slow down and you're going to focus on these long stretches of this muscle, especially if it's pumped. Studies show that this does contribute to more muscle growth. Um, and better recovery. So that's part of it. Um, the other part of it is to get you into that state of recovery a little bit faster and better and in, in a more organized way rather than stopping your workout all of a sudden cold and then moving mm. to the next thing. You, you, you have a process of allowing your body to come down to a more uh, a, a better mm. state. Now for endurance athletes, a little bit more valuable. Um, you, you You tend to get this blood pulling effect in your extremities when you're uh, running or cycling a lot. And so cool downs can prevent some of the dizziness that some of them would experience after cycling. So rather than like doing a hard cycle and then just stopping, they would do a hard cycle and then kind of slow down. But in my experience, cool downs are excellent for doing uh, correctional static stretching, improving range of motion, um, and then uh, accelerating muscle growth through that that static stretching uh, period. I think there's a lot of opportunity here. I think that this is definitely an overlooked uh, aspect of working out and training in general uh, to where, yeah, you can bring yourself down into that more parasympathetic state. And for athletes, how beneficial is that when you can, you can control your body and be able to get yourself into that state a little bit more effectively, a little more efficiently and train your way there. And, and I think a good way to do that would be to really implement these uh, cool downs in your workout and start training your body how to respond like that. So if you're in a really rigorous activity and event, uh, it, it, to be able to then calm the system down and, and, and regenerate some energy, uh, I think that would be massively beneficial. Well, I think I, I think it all depends on you know what who you are. are you a weekend warrior person who kind of just is approaching you know f working out and just trying to stay healthy and fit and you know balanced lifestyle and you know that person to me if you're if you're getting the main lifts in you're eating well sleeping well you're doing like you're, you're taking care of the big rocks um, I don't think this is a, that big of a deal. If you are a competitor, if you're somebody who's competing and you're and you're looking for the competitive edge, whether that be sport or building a physique and looking to, you know, maximize optimal gains, this does matter. Um, and it matters a lot, actually. I mean, you to your you guys both your point about the parasymp parasympathetic system getting into that state allows your body to start to recover. Until you're in that state, you haven't started the recovery process. So let's just use hypothetical numbers and just pretend that. You know, you go and you don't do a cool down and say it takes a half hour to an hour before your body actually switches over into that system and says, oh, okay, we've calmed down now. He's no longer hammering me with weights or running on the treadmill or beating me up. It's no longer stress time. Now it's time to start recovering and rebuilding. And let's say that's a, it takes your body naturally, you know, a half hour, hour to do that. And let's say when you do cool downs, it only takes it 15 minutes to do that because you did a cool down process. Now that 15 minutes of recovery times five to seven days a week times 30 days a month times 300 you know in a year mm -hmm. that shit really starts to add yeah, up so point. if you are a competitive athlete or looking for the next edge this this stuff does make a huge difference and this is where things like you know cryotherapy and ice baths and infrared sun all these these tools really start to come into play where man these can be difference makers for somebody who is trying to take their recovery and take their training to a whole nother level. Well, you saw that with LeBron James's all his yeah. money he poured into that direction and it right. did make a massive difference. Yeah, you know what's funny is that bodybuilders instinctively have done this for a long time. There's like a ritual, especially in the older days of bodybuilding. After a workout, they would go out and uh, they'd, they'd eat a big meal and go lay out in the sun. Mm -hmm. now, this is what they did, right? Or after a, a hard workout, I have a, by the way, eating is parasympathetic, right? When you eat food, it kicks in this recut, this digest, rest and digest is what parasympathetic stands for uh, or kind of does. And bodybuilders, again, they've done this instinctively. I, every time I, when I work out, one of my favorite things to do, and this is even after I understood that eating after I work out isn't as important, doesn't really make a huge difference. I still like the process of, I just had a hard workout. Now let me relax 
and eat. It's really part of the cool down process from an instinctual perspective. 